Hi guys, it's Monday. It's P and Q time, so it's time to P your Q's whilst minding my P's and Q's. Um, this is the question and answer or comment and response series. And yeah, if you're easily offended, please don't watch. If you want to question, leave a question or comment, either leave it below in the uh, comment section below, or email me at miniwarzone at gmail.com and I'll leave the link to that in the video description below. Right, that's that out of the way. I've got emails, one, two, three, four emails. I haven't actually looked through these, but I've seen some of the uh, comments you've left. Okay, so uh, actually, let me get a cup of coffee. Doing this in a new format, by the way. I'm, doing, I'm, I'm trying out using the other camera, see how it goes, just for a one-off. And I've got it set to manual focus, so if I go out of focus, not like I can do about it unless I reach to the camera. Put it on manual focus so you don't get the noise of the autofocus all the time clicking away. And I am oh, oh yeah, that's it. Recording it in low in the lowest resolution possible to see if that makes the upload any quicker. Uh, probably won't know my luck, but hey. Hoping you can hear me okay. Anyway, I'm going to do the, the uh, emails first. If you if you want to be, remain anonymous, email me because I won't read out who it's from. Just I did that just in case people were uh, anxious about asking a question or making a comment and they didn't want to feel I don't know foolish or embarrassed or whatever. Because I've I've been in that position myself, so that's one way of doing it. But if you don't, if you're okay, just leave your comment below. Anyway, on with it. First email then, nice and short, says, Hi Pete, quick question for you. What never grows old? That's it. Hi Pete, quick question for you. What never grows old? Um, either, is that a joke or am I missing some of the email there? No. I don't know. That's a strange question to start this uh, episode with. I don't know, um, what never grows old, I don't know, having your hair long and wearing leather jackets when you're a youngster, that never seems to grow old, I don't know. Okay. Next one, hey Pete, please can I ask what brush you use to point with in your Broodlord Update 6 video? That's the last one. Oh, I was pointing at the little bits on his arm and I was using a army painter insane detail brush. Can't put my hand on it right now, but it probably isn't going to be it. No, my look. No, it's character brush. But it was one like that, army painter one. But the insane detail one. Uh, next one. Hello, hello. I was wondering what got you into bolt action. Was it the convention you went to? I have been to many conventions myself and come away addicted to new games. Well. I certainly came away addicted to other games, um, but it wasn't the convention that got me into Bolt Action. I was already into Bolt Action before I went. I would have to say it was the, excuse me, what got me into Bolt Action was the demo game um, that Beasts of War put out. Oh, excuse me. And what really hooked me was that amazing random game mechanic they have. Uh, I'd love... I'd love it if Warhammer did a version of that. That would be awesome. Absolutely awesome. It's an amazing game mechanic. The uncertainty. Really reflecting the uncertainty of war there. But yeah. Oh, this one's a long one. Last email. Hi Pete. I really like your channel and enjoy the content that you put out. Thank you very much. I can see that your YouTubing has really evolved and always look forward to the next video. Another great thumbs up. On to my question then, and I hope you don't mind my asking. On the last Chill with Pete vid that you did, you mentioned dead YouTube channels, and I wondered, how long do you reckon you will be doing yours for? I only ask as it looks like you have so much wargaming stuff on the go, and fear that you may stop doing videos in preference of the gaming side of things. Well, let me lay your fears to rest right there, my friend. No, I'm going to be doing this for as long as I can. Um, I have no uh, 
inklings that it's going to stop any time. Um, no, because I, I tend to... Uh, it's great now, you've got YouTube and people being able to make their own videos and things. I, I got into Warhammer, or 40k, uh, without really thinking about YouTube. I was never really big on YouTube before. I, I mean, I look at it here and there, the old music video or whatever, but... Um, since getting into the hobby, uh, I've discovered YouTube and a wealth of information out there. Um, it's good with me, with my condition, um, that when I'm not able or feeling well enough to do the modelling side of things, or gaming side of things, I can then revert to doing more chilled, laid-back um, videos and just talk about stuff. And that's what I love, I really love about it. Um, so no, for me the two go hand in hand and I'll be doing them for as long as I can, definitely, and with a um, you know subscriber base like I've got, I um, if ever I was thinking of you know, retiring from YouTube, which I'm not, and I don't want to ever, I, I would certainly let you know. Uh, the only way I wouldn't be able to let you know is if I don't know I got run over by a bus or something happened to me unexpectedly, but I would. I've always try to let you know what's going on. Anyway, thank you for that. There's some good comments there. On to the comments that were left below on last week's um, video. I'm going from you know most uh, recent to the first one, so going backwards really, because that's just the way they print out. So starting with the British Legion, and he says, "Great vid, Pete. My question: the book behind you, Werewolf." Is that an RPG game? And if so, do you play? Keep up the good work. Well, first of all, thank you for your comments. Um, love the positive feedback. So thank you for that. The book behind me on last week's uh, The Werewolf game. You have to excuse the dogs. The post has been. But um, there's some workmen going around. So I'll let them bark it out first. The work behind you will. Right, yes, that's a good good one. Uh, yes, yeah, so it is an RPG game, Will of the Apocalypse. Um, and do I play? Yes, I do. I haven't done for a while, but um, I started in that game back in the 90s. But I actually started out playing a game called Vampire the Masquerade, which is all part of the same um, series of games. You've got Vampire, you've got Werewolf, you've got Mage, um, Wraith, Mummy, there's all sorts. Anyway, they all go hand in hand. They all use the same game mechanics. Um, I started playing, so I started playing Vampire, then I, then I started playing games of uh, Vampire and Werewolf, which were mixed. Uh, that's kind of fun. And then Vampire, Werewolf and Mage, and Mage on its own, Wraith on its own. That's a strange game. Um, Oh, I love it, it's a great game, um, set in a world of darkness it's called, um, which is kind of like a gothic punk setting of our world a little bit into the future, but yeah, it's funny actually because I can remember, you're not called a DM in that, you're not called a DM in that, uh, or GM in that um, game, you're called a storyteller if you're running the game, and I remember running a game uh, set in the future, calling it Plymouth 2010, that was back in the 90s, and uh, here we are in 2015, and um, it's not quite how I painted it, the the city, anyway, but yes, I do I do play, or I have played, um, and the books are great, great artwork is fantastic, it's a really good game to get into, uses um, D10s, just D10s, to do the percentage dies. James and his stuff says, what is your favourite model or character? Well, I'll start backwards. My favourite character is easy. That's Mephiston of the Blood Angels, but he's not my favourite model. Um, oh, favourite model. I, wow, that's a toughie. My favourite model. Um... That's hard. Um, that really is hard. There's so many good ones out there. 
I do love the Imperial Knights, especially the Forge One ones. I'd probably say that they're my favourite models. Uh, generalistically, I suppose the Dreadnought is my favourite model. Um, what are these? Swarm Lord? Tyranids? Yeah, I'll say well, the Fist One's definitely my favourite character. And I'll go for Imperial Knights as my favourite model. Ooh, we're on to the next page. So, there you go. Right, on to the next one. I'm just going to finish my coffee. This is good being able to do this. I like to drink it before it gets too cold. Um, right, okay. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right. I always say this, hope I'm pronouncing it right, and sorry if I'm not. Is it Unctur? Unctur just says, a great vid. Thank you very much. Next one, The Lone Ranger, 1984, says, All right, mate, just wanted to know how you're finding your airbrush and if you've noticed the difference between the cheap ones and the badger you've got. I'm finding it good. Um, I'm not trying to do anything too fancy at the moment with it. Um, the fanciest stuff I've done is on my Broodlord. Um, well, and some test stuff. I've been doing as well. Um, how am I finding it? Well, let me pop this down a moment. This is my cheap, well, one of my cheap ones. I've got this one here. Uh, I ordered another, well, the case is damaged because uh, my dog got to it first when it came through the post box. Another more, a more detailed one. Um, and the other one that's the, um, Siphon option, which I don't use because I've had people say it's too, um, you use too much paint with it, it doesn't come out so good. Um, cheap one is, uh, yeah, it's okay, it's, 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 it's great for priming and base coating, really. I don't use it for much else. Um, there is a huge difference between that and the Badger. Before I go on to that though, um, little tip here which isn't very expensive get yourself if you haven't already a quick release valve thing there so you just pop them off back in again couple of quid it saves you um when you unscrew it it saves the um the line going everywhere so you just pop that off easily go and rinse out your paint pot and so on um the badger a little cap off. It feels different. It feels more balanced in the hand. Um, it's easier to clean. It's, it's far easier to take apart and put back together again. I always find the little handle on the other one, uh, the lever, a bit finicky. But easy on this. So easy. Um, it's not a detail. The, the 105 is not really a detail brush. But if you're careful, you can get quite good detail with it, which is what I'm used. I've been using on the Brood Lord, and I've found that um, very nice um, for whatever reason. And I only use uh, um, airbrush paints. I know people can thin them down with alcohol and whatever. Um, I found it doesn't clog as easy as the other one. Actually, that can be quite annoying. Um, is it worth the extra money? I don't know. Um, depends on the individual, I suppose. For me, it is because I just find it easier, easier to clean. That's my big bugbear with airbrushes cleaning them. But yeah, yeah, I, I love it. I find it great. I'd love to get a super fine detail on one day. Um, well, so many other things I need to get, but save up for one well, one day and see what I can achieve with that but uh, I'm finding I'm finding the badger great I mean the cheap ones it's good to get you going I suppose into the world of airbrushing I think that's what I'm finding anyway um, and yeah but the badger is kind of it is another level up it definitely feels different yeah worth it um, right moving on Ninja Gaming Chuck W Wow, <laughs> says, my question is, 
Which models from any board game do you most enjoy building stroke painting? And great vid. I really enjoy this series. Thank you very much. Um, well, which models from any board game do I most enjoy building and painting? Um, board game. Um, I've done a few over the years. One of the ones I enjoyed most because it was the first board game I entirely completely finished painting and all the figures from the um, add-ons and so on was Hero Quest. Oh, I really enjoyed that one. Um, other than that, I'm enjoying Zombicide at the moment. Really, really enjoying that. Zombicide figures, painting them. Super enjoy that. Um, don't think anything else springs to mind. Yeah, I'll say Hero Quest. Although I did, I did do Space Crusade, but I didn't enjoy that as much for some reason. I just didn't. I don't know. At the time, I didn't enjoy it so much. But Hero Quest definitely. Um, I got my eye on another game as well called Maniac Mansion, which looks super cool. The miniatures for that look good. So watch this space. But yeah, so Hero Quest and Zombicide. Next page. Hmm. Gothamam Service says, which Space Marine colour scheme most strikes you, loyal and or traitor? Hmm. Excuse me, I've got a bit uh, indigestion or something. Um, which colour scheme most strikes me? Um, ooh, wow. I suppose it doesn't really matter if it's loyalist, uh, loyal or traitor chapters. I love blacks, reds, blues and greens. Uh, my, f my four favourite. Um, yeah, um, whether it's chaos or or, or I mean, I, so there, there I love, I love like ultramarines. I love thousand suns. I love blood angels, dark angels. Yeah, the blues and the greens and the reds, and on any chapter, whether it's the loyal one or traitor one. So yeah, Jason Brown says and. Hi Jason. Um, great video as always. What are your thoughts on pre-World War II historicals like Hail Caesar? Any interest? Well you may have seen by now that I've bought the Black Powder book. So um, yes I have huge interest uh, in it. As for what period I, th I think you asked me on that video. Um, I think I'd like to start with the American Civil War maybe work backwards from there, see how it goes. It's a, it looks like a great rule set and one I will be pursuing. So yeah, I, I would say pre-World War II I want to start with the American Civil War because I've, I've always liked that. I do like the the whole... Um, I don't know what year it was with Zulu and the whole Rocks Drift thing. Um, whatever period that was, forgive me, I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, that, that looks cool as well. Hail Caesar looks cracking and I'm, I'm really enjoying watching your videos on that. So I've no doubt that at some point I may get around to that. Um, <laughs> just so many out there. Um, right, one more. Idik Beer says, good answers Pete, always an interesting chat. Next question then, are you a tea or coffee man and what is your favourite biscuit to dunk? That's easy, super easy and super boring. Uh, am I a tea or coffee man? I'm both in equal, in, in equal measures. Tea or coffee? Don't mind either. My favourite biscuit to dunk though is very boring, the simple rich tea biscuit. Yeah, rich tea. Um, you know, I like I like biscuits, but I prefer the plain rich tea one. There's got to be McVitie's. The other stuff, it's slightly different. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. it just tastes different. But yeah, McVitie's and tea or coffee. And that's it for this week. So thank you for watching. Um, there's going to be more videos as always. And um, 
What can I say, guys? Till next time. Happy gaming, everyone.